Hello and welcome to a Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead tutorial on boat building with me, Rob Hale. I would say that this tutorial will cover beginning boat making skills all the way up until the kind of intermediate level and uh, if there's a need for an advanced one, which I don't really think that there is because that it most has mostly to do with vehicle construction as a whole, um, then I will do that too if there's a there's a desire. Um, I got the idea for this in my own Let's Play series, which I do recommend that you check out because it's just a whole ton of fun. Um, and I had some trouble getting started with the building of the boat and, and being unsure as to what I could do to my boat in order to make it function. And so I decided to do my research and uh, do this. I also saw a Let's Play or Let's Role Play video from Rikon of Rikon Roleplays. Shout out to him. Uh, he is definitely one of my favorite Let's Play YouTubers and uh, he was having the same trouble that I was having. So uh, here we go. Um, first of all, in terms of, of getting a boat, one of the, well it seems to be the simplest things that you can do is find an inflatable raft. And Finding inflatable rafts, which is what this is right here that I'm kind of circling with the mouse, that is like can be pretty easy to find the raft, but finding the pump to pump up that raft, in my experience anyway, has not been anywhere near as easy. Um, so you can find the rafts in military surplus stores, and you can find the, the pumps, it's called a hand pump in game, uh, to blow that up, but they do not come together. So, um, But that's what this is right here. So that can be easy. If you happen upon both of those at the same time, then you instantly have a boat uh, and it will serve all of your purposes. It functions like any other boat. Um, but let's talk about instead, let's say it's not an option and you need to build a boat, or maybe you want to build a boat. So let's take a look. The first thing you need to consider is the size of the boat, and the shape of the boat, and the materials of the boat. Specifically, the most important thing that you need to pay attention to are what are called the boat boards. And if I take a look at this example boat, I'm going to scroll over it with my mouse here, and uh, on the side you'll see a window pop up that describes what is there. So I want you to refer to that as I scroll over. Now under where it says mouse view, you can see that there is a wooden frame here and a 30 inch boat board. Those are the two kind of basic fundamental components that a beginning player can use to begin making a boat. So now if I actually go up and examine this boat with my character by walking up, I'm going to hit E for examine and then I'm going to uh, hit right which is the direction of this little boat and I'm going to get this detailed screen. So in the detailed screen, what you'll see here is that first of all, the safe uh, and top speed are at zero, and that's because this boat will not float, and there are, there's a few reasons for that, but in this case, the one I want you to pay most attention to is that it, it does say that this is a boat. It identifies it as a boat because there is a boat board, and it says that this is a leaky boat. So for this boat right here, uh, the primary reason why this is a leaky boat is the very first thing that I... that you really need to pay attention to in terms of making boats, which is that every boat needs a minimum of three boat boards, which means it also needs a minimum of three frames. Now for all of the first several examples I have here, I'm using wooden frames, and that is because in terms of making boats, the wooden frame is going to be the easiest one to find or to build, I'm sorry, um, for a beginning player. And I'm going to cover, actually, I'm going to go over building one and, and show you the skills that you uh, require and the materials that you require in order to build one. So there is some um, materials and skills necessary, especially for the boat board, I, I think it was. Um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So this boat does not float, it doesn't move, it doesn't do anything. Okay, it sits there on the water. Now if I go down here to this second boat, I'm going to take a look at it, and as I scroll over both of these two, you'll see they're the same. So they're actually both replicas of this, but two put onto one vehicle. Okay. So if I examine this boat the same way I did the last one, you'll see that this is identical, except for that it is too long. 
and it has two wooden frames thus and two 30 inch boat boards and yet still it leaks and again that is because there's not enough boat boards in this particular one three are required and just to belabor this point we have another boat now that this has three frames on it again the one on that on each end has a wooden frame and a 30 inch boat board as you can see when I scroll over them on the far right but the middle one is just a frame now if I examine this boat you will see once again this boat leaks so what that means again is that in this case I need three boat boards okay that is the absolute minimum so again just kind of belaboring a point even if I've got three frames that's not enough okay so oh, let's go up to this uh, fourth boat here. And this one has the wooden frame and 30 inch boat board at each end, just like the one above. And in the middle, it has a wooden frame and a 30 inch boat board as well. So the only difference between these two is that this middle one has a 30 inch boat board in the center. And when I look at it, you can see right here, it'll say boat swims. So this is a viable boat. This can float uh, in deep water just fine. Now this particular boat won't move because like all vehicles in the game it needs a couple of major components. It needs essentially it needs something to move on. Now for land-based vehicles that would be wheels and for water-based vehicles that's the boat board. So that's the purpose of these boat boards is something to kind of move on and then it needs a source of power and the source of powers for boats is exactly the same as the source of powers for land vehicles. So if we take a look at this next boat down, I'm going to examine this one. It is identical to the one above it, except in this, at the back end, actually, there is an addition of hand paddles, and that's it. The only difference between this one and the last one I looked at is a 30-inch boat board and a wooden frame, same in the middle, and then at the very bottom, the back of the boat, you would say, the aft, I guess. Um, or is that, did I get that backwards? Anyway, is a, a set of hand paddles. Okay, and again, I'm going to be showing you how to install this if, if you don't know a little bit towards the end. So, this is actually a viable boat. So, not only did you see in that last screen that it, that it is seaworthy, but you can also hop right on it. And when you hop on a vehicle where the controls are, um, in this case it's the hand paddles are the, both the controls and the source of power, right? It's a little more complicated in terms of controls sometimes with larger vehicles on land, but in the case of the boat, the hand paddles are the, the source of controlling the boat in terms of steering and the source of power, okay? Arm power, right? Upper body power. So. When I hop on this, you can see right here, it says press this uh, up carrot, I think they call that, to drive. Now that is just a shift six on my PC. And when I do that, it says I take control. Um, I can see this, uh, this reticle out here, and this works the same way as driving. So I'm not going to cover too much of this in the tutorial, but I do want to talk a little bit before we go uh, too far on. I'm actually going to stop driving because I see that my stamina is... Uh, tanked. And I'm hungry and thirsty. Just give me one second here. I'm going to let go of the controls to let my stamina recover real quick. Bear with me. Okay, that's good enough. Now, it's, it is important to uh, note the stamina. That is actually the, basically the next thing I wanted to talk about. If I take a look at the boat again, I, I'm actually just going to stand next to it so you know which one I'm talking about. This boat right here to my right, I'm going to examine it, same as we have been. Now you'll notice down here at the safe and top speed section that I have two uh, different numbers here. Uh, this is in miles per hour. Again, in my Let's Plays, I explain this. I mean, first of all, I'm an American myself, but the setting of this is supposed to be in New England, which is in the United States. And here we use miles per hour. But I will uh, actually real quick just look up that top speed. I think it was 49 miles per hour to KPH is, so the top speed is supposedly just about 79 kilometers per hour. 
uh, that's that's pretty extreme. Um, <laughs> but the safe speed you'll see here, this is what's very important. This is the amount, basically the 49 miles per hour is, is kind of what the boat itself can handle. The 18 miles per hour that you'll see here, this is what your muscles can handle. What your arms, in this case, that are paddling the boat, this is what you can do. So if you, you can exceed this number, and I'll demonstrate right now. When I get in the boat, I'm going to hit that uh, Shift-6 to take control. And now as I hit up, this is setting the speed in miles per hour. Okay, this is my present speed, which is zero, so I just can go up and down and I can set which speed I want to kind of get to. 49, as you'll recall, was the highest speed. Um, I, don't, I don't think I can actually get there, but what happens is as I let time pass now and I begin paddling, I'll start moving up towards that speed. And once I get over my safe speed, which was 16 miles per hour, you'll see that this turns yellow. Or 18, I'm sorry, I think it was 18. You'll see that this turns yellow. And that means uh, I'm straining to go at this speed. So my stamina will start to take a dip. And as I go even faster than that, it will eventually turn pink. And then I think it might turn red a little bit later. I don't want to get too far from the shore. Uh, but as you can see, my stamina is starting to go down. So as long as I keep it under my uh, safe speed, then my stamina won't deplete. Uh, at this point, I don't know if it will. Let me see. Will it replenish? Yeah, it looks like it will very slowly replenish if I'm going 18 miles per hour. Now, one thing to note is if you forget while you're in the vehicle what your top speed is, notice as I go up, so take a look at this green zero right here just above my mouse cursor. As I go up, it goes in increments of 10 miles per hour. I don't know what it is for the um, for KPH. I would assume it's something similar to that, um, starting at 0 and 10, but it it uh, deviates from that a little bit right here where it goes to 18 so this will automatically go to your safe speed and stop there unless I continue going up so the next one will be 20 so it takes me to that next 10 um, but that is a good way to know okay this is my my safe speed and if I go beyond that I'm gonna start burning up stamina so it's a good way to know while you're on the water real quickly what your safe speed is without having to look anything up and the same, a similar thing happens again at the very top. I don't get to 50 because that's beyond the top speed of this vehicle. Another thing I want you to take a note is when I go backwards, oops, hit the wrong button. When I go backwards, and uh, now as you can see, my actual speed is actually going down, and I am moving back again. Going backwards takes more stamina than going forwards. So if I go to negative 12. Uh, I believe it will drain my stamina even in this boat, but we might see it in some other boat examples as well. But just be aware that going backwards isn't the same as going forwards, and it is more taxing. So let's just get back to shore here. So we're going to come to a stop. I'm going to let go of the controls. All of this is the same as the vehicles. And I'm going to get right off. So I let go of the controls the same way I grab the controls, which is the Shift-6, but you do want to make sure that your actual speed is uh, zero before you let go of the controls um, on a boat if you don't do that I mean like just like on a car it'll keep going uh, but on a boat then a lot of times if you're attempting to stop here if you're out in the middle of the water it's not a big deal you can just take back control of the boat uh, but most of the time you're going to be heading up close to a shore and if you <laughs> attempt to let go of the controls and the boat is still moving then you will run ashore uh, which does bring me to another point. If you run ashore at a pretty slow speed, like around, in this case, 10 miles per hour, since I'm doing miles per hour, I know for a fact if you run aground from, uh, at 10 miles per hour, it doesn't really damage the boat too much, or if at all. Uh, but I have seen, let me, let me just check my notes here real quick, if I can find it. Uh, speed at which I can confirm at least you will damage uh, 28 miles per hour. I, I have damaged a boat at 28 miles per hour. Um, so that's pretty fast. I mean, you're probably not going to be going that fast anyway. Um, you might damage it at less than that. I don't know, but I just can confirm for sure at 28 miles per hour. Uh, you you will damage the boat if you run aground. Now, one thing that's interesting is that um, when running aground, uh, it does seem to be the center boat board that always gets damaged. Uh, 
and that could be because I, all, I, I usually put the pan paddles in the center boat board. Uh, that could also be because that's where I'm standing. I don't totally know in terms of game mechanics how that works. Uh, well, let's just give it a shot. Actually, let's see if let's see if it damages the back in this case. Why the heck not? Let's just do it. Wait, oh, yeah. to uh, any of my other boats. I'm gonna I'm gonna thread the needle here. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. So I just ran aground. I'm gonna uh, release controls and stop driving. Now I'm gonna check out the boat. Oh, and nothing got damaged. So you saw right there, I actually hit the ground going fairly fast, and there was no damage in this case. Um, but again, I have seen damage in the past, so so don't count on that. Now, uh, so we know that the minimum that the number of boat boards that are required is three. There is other requirements for the boat board, uh, and that has to do with the shape of the boat uh, and also the, the dimensions and, and size of the boat. So, for example, this boat is almost identical to these, these boats up here, uh, the last few functioning boats we looked at. Um, but one difference you'll see here when I examine the boat is that it is side by side instead. So when I sit in this boat, which is in the middle section here, and I take control, now you'll see that the reticle is out here in front of the side. So, so I'm not uh, going end to end like I would do in any real life boat, where like a canoe or something, where it's it's long and narrow. In this case, it's wide and uh, not long. I don't know what you would say there, but it, it's wide. So it does actually function just fine. I will show you this, as you can see. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this. The game does not care. So if you want to make your boat wide, totally cool. Game is fine with that. Just an FYI. Now another thing that I am demonstrating here on uh, on this uh, boat, I'm going to examine it again, is that I have some other features on here too. Now I have a, a wooden box here on the center piece and then to the left of that as well. So if I escape out of here, you can actually quite easily see that graphically, of course. And then you can read it on the right under the mouse view as well. Wooden box on both of these, and I don't have it on these. So notice here there is no issue in terms of balance. We're going to talk about balance later. But the balance doesn't seem to be affected by the items on top of the boat boards and frames. It's basically just the boat boards themselves that need to be balanced. Again, we're going to talk about that in the next few boats that have uh, kind of larger shapes and more dynamic setups. Um, but these baskets being off to the side like this don't affect it. And the boat being long like this doesn't affect it because, again, this has what we need, which is a minimum of three boat boards. And in this case, they are balanced, which we will begin talking about in a second. Um, the other, the final thing I want to notice here is that it's okay to have a basket on the uh, section where I'm sitting uh, and rowing. So I can have all of that. Notice that the wooden box uh, on the far right there under mouse view is a wooden box and hand paddles all on the, the seat that I control it on. There's no actual seat. I shouldn't say seat in this case. You can put a seat on here, but um, this is a uh, the wooden box and hand paddles, and I'm basically sitting in the wooden box, but I can store stuff in here, that's fine. It is also fine if I put stuff uh, in the baskets too, and I'll, I will talk a little bit more about that in a second. So moving on to this next boat, as you can see, this one is a 2x2 two two instead of, uh, you know, 1x3 or 3x1. So what's the setup in here? So I just examine this like I always do. Um, top left corner here I've got a wooden frame with a boat board. On the one to the right of that I have a wooden box. I have the controls and power source in the hand paddles and I have a 30 inch boat board here. I have a boat board here and a wooden box as well and here I just have a wooden box and a frame. There is no boat board here, notice, and there is no um, on this top one above it there is no basket. Okay, see that? So here what I want to demonstrate is that um, 
you can put a wooden box on top of a piece that doesn't have a boat board and not all of the pieces require a boat board. So remember that what I need is three boat boards and balance. Um, it is okay to have more boat boards that um, won't make it operate any better. Um, all the boat boards will do is once you get once you once you've met the minimum of three, then the only thing you need boat boards for there is balance. And in general, you can just do this with three boat boards, like I have here. So I have four frames and three boat boards, and I can put a wooden box over the piece that doesn't have the boat board, that is fine. I can put boxes anywhere I want, really. So if you take a look at this, and I scroll over this with the mouse, just so you can get a different kind of view, a graphical view of this, you'll notice that this is the one that is lacking the boat board. And this this sails just fine. There's no difference. It's a, it's because I have the controls uh, up here. They are The controls are off-center, so it, it alters very slightly um, the ability to control this boat, but um, just in terms of, let's say, going through tight spaces or something. You'll just have to realize that your control is in a straight line from here, and there is a bit extra on the side of the boat. But in terms of functioning, this is totally adequate. And in the second of two, you can see they're getting bigger here. In this example, I'm going to examine this. Now this is where we're starting to get into the balance issue. Now this is a 3x3 three three, and not all of the framed sections have boat boards as you can see here. The ones that are right up in the front, and this one you can even see, um, they, they look different but these three are all the same. This is the front of the boat. Um, they don't have boat boards or anything at all. You can tell where the boat boards are because it's this, this slightly different graphic here. So there's a boat board here, a boat board here, and a boat board here. So in this case, if you think about it, there is some balance to this. Now I want to I want to show you one thing. I'm actually going to remove the boat board from the middle here. Dog spotted? No, that's okay. Okay. Now when I take that boat board off, it says it leaks. We know why because now there's only two boat boards on right here and here in the back. But if I install my boat board that I just took off. Oh, I don't care about that dog. If I install that boat board here in the back, uh, now I've got my three boat boards. So I have my minimum number of boat boards that I need. But take a look. It is now unbalanced. So because it's a three by three, in order to balance this, I'm going to take off this middle one. I'm removing the middle one because that's going to provide balance from left to right on this vehicle. Okay, So from left to right I've got balance because of these two. But if I put another one on the back I still have left to right balance, right? But I don't have front to back balance and I need that. So I can put that boat board we saw here in the middle and that floated and worked just fine. That is a totally perfectly adequate boat. If I put it up here in the middle that would work just fine and be a totally adequate boat too. If I put it here, uh, I don't actually know what will happen. Let's find out. Uh, boat board. Oh, I still don't care about that dog. And that swims just fine. So as long as it swims here, you're good to go. Uh, that's all you really need to, to worry about in terms of the boat. So this setup provides enough balance. So this boat board in a 3 by 3 situation will work anywhere on this boat no matter where you put it. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, I don't think I have to set one up here to, to know that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that is the way it is. And it's kind of that way with the vehicles too in terms of wheels, the land vehicles. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so this will work just fine, and in this case I have the hand paddles in the back. These hand paddles can be anywhere. So even if the hand paddles were dead in the middle of the boat, you might that might seem uh, counterintuitive to you because there's wood on each side. But that actually works just fine, and I think when we go down here to look at this one, you'll see that that's true as well. So let's look at this slightly larger one here. And I'm going to examine this vehicle again. And let's see where are the controls. 
actually no, the yeah, hand house there. They're in the very, very, very back right. And again, as you can see down here, this one swims just fine. So when it says swims down there, then this boat will move no matter what. If I start building bits on uh, more frames, let's say if I go out here and install a wooden frame, that will alter the balance of the boat. And that might affect whether or not this says swims. Just keep that in mind. But as long as what I'm doing is installing, let's say, a wooden box, or a wooden aisle or something. I can put a seat in. I can do whatever I like. If you if you have NPCs and you want them to sit in here, you can install seats and then assign the seats to them so that they will sit where they're supposed to. Um, all of that is just fine as long as the balance uh, on the boat boards is adequate relative to the frame setup that you have. So again, this works fine even though I've got the controls down here, the hand pedals. I, when I say controls here, I mean the hand paddles. That's also the power source, like I said before. That's totally fine. The hand paddles could be anywhere. It, it doesn't matter at all. This could be. It could be here, 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 here wherever. Um, so what matters is once I've got the frame set up down, which is like this, and you can see this is also. I purposely made this one sort of oddly shaped. There's a hole here. Um, it's got some some things that come out in the front with no no more boat here so this kind of gives it like almost a speedboat look in terms of shape um, that's all totally fine again it, it will affect the balance of the boat in other words where is the weight of the boat in this case this boat is back heavy right so I have to keep that in mind how long is it one two three four five six seven eight nine and so I need to have this boat board up here for balance and this is at one two three four five Okay, that makes sense. If it was four, it would be less than half. Um, I think even in this case, because even though I have some holes here, it's not enough that if, if I have this boat board, if I moved it back one, I don't think it balances there. But again, just play around with it. So now you know that as long as you have the minimum of three, it won't be leaky. And if it says if it doesn't say swims, if it says unbalanced, then all you need to do is shift these around so that you have balance in this direction and balance in this direction and that is it so I could put on more, bo more boat boards um, and that's fine and sometimes that might be what you want to do if you're looking to kind of do a minimum but then you realize you messed it up uh, in order to take these off I think you need like a wrench or something and sometimes wrenches can be hard to come by especially in early game when you might be building your first boat so it might be easier to make another boat board and just stick it on somewhere <laughs> and you know that can give you the balance that you need without needing to take a boat board off uh, and, and uh, needing to balance it that way so you won't necessarily need a wrench um, so in terms of the boat boards that is the, the design basics of it and the most important thing that you need to worry about in terms of getting it to swim is how the boat boards are set up and how the uh, or on the frames and the basic shape of the boat which you get from the frames uh, you do need to power it and you do need to control it and that is all done with hand paddles for your for your earliest boats which I will build again like I said before I'm gonna build that in just a few minutes to show you but uh, that's that's the essentials of getting them to, to float first and foremost now before I do continue on I do want to mention I have some uh, books for sale on Amazon those are I'm just pimping out shamelessly pimping out my uh, books here uh, this is not related to cataclysm but um, it is it, you know in kind of a similar vein that I think that you uh, people listening will potentially be interested in um, they are superhero stories but they're a little bit grittier and, and more adult and darker than the typical like Marvel fair so if you've been liking a lot of the kind of comic book style movies that have been coming out um, and are interested in a, in a serialized style um, story um, I'm gonna be releasing them I think probably each week and uh, they're only 99 cents they're basically um, it's almost like just a chunk of a, of a whole book so each one um, kinda reads uh, almost like a comic book in a way but it's not a comic book it's 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 an actual book so I'm gonna put a link below um, they're on Amazon they are electronic only right now but you do not need a reader to read them so if that interests you please do go check it out you don't need a reader as long as you can see PDFs and stuff you'll be able to see it just fine um, so yeah done with that uh, thanks if you do go and check that out if not that's cool too um, so let's see, I covered safe speed. Let me just look over my notes real quick. 
stamina on both sides, yep. So one thing I, th I think I kind of touched on, but I want to touch on it a little bit more, is that uh, one of these boats, uh, one of the baskets, I think, yeah, this boat, uh, if you take a look at, um, like this, and I'm going to say get items, if you look in here, there are two steel booms in each of these baskets, That's what this, this plus means that there's something else there inside this basket. And in each of these baskets is a steel boom, and each of these steel booms weighs 70 pounds, um, and they have a decent volume. That's about the max each of these baskets can hold. So um, there's 140 pounds. Again, we're, I mean, what is that for kilos? Uh, 50, 60, probably like 60. Yeah, probably about some, somewhere around 60 kilos um, in each of these baskets. And this this it doesn't seem to actually affect if you look in here and examine the vehicle it doesn't affect the top speed it also doesn't seem to affect the safe speed so if you have a lot of stuff stored in the storage compartments of your boat that doesn't actually seem to affect the boat at all um, and I'm guessing it's the same with the NPCs I have heard information to the contrary elsewhere but I have not actually seen it the safe speed seems to be the same no matter how much I load in. When I go out on the boat, it seems to be the same. So I don't think, I think you can load this up and not worry about how fast you can go um, without killing your stamina. But the items on the boat do add up to it. I think the total weight of the boat, uh, I am guessing, which is, um, th this is not the mass of the boat. This boat, the boat does not weigh 600 pounds. Um, that is the boat plus the stuff inside of it, and again, I think it's the it's just the mass of the boat itself that affects your safe speed. Just just a heads up on that. I did I did test that out, and it seems to be no big deal loading up your boat. Uh, let's see, running ground talked about that. So. The size of the boat, uh, as you could see in this one, I, I did just mention that, but I wanted to point out the first boats that were three long um, had a safe speed of 18 miles per hour, and this one, which is four, has a safe speed of 16. Let's take a look at this. This one goes down to 14, which is three by three. This one stayed at 14, so I actually made this, this is uh, over double the size, right? And uh, so it seems like 14 is possibly the minimum, not the minimum, the minimum for the hand paddles. So I think even if you make a just an absolutely enormous boat, um, you may still be able to paddle this at at least 14 miles per hour, and whatever that is in kilometers per hour, you can do the conversion there if you like. So um, that's pretty cool if if that's true. Um, uh, you can still get around in a huge boat, so uh, that's not too bad. Now with that in mind. Let's get into what to do, or, or, or kind of some other options in terms of boat making. Now what you see just below me here, I'll move to the side so it's obvious which vehicle I'm talking about. This one right here. This is a bicycle, standard bicycle that you may find anywhere. Um, and this one has been modified to be a boat. So you can modify any vehicle in the game. And I think you can get a hint about what's going to happen below if you look at the bottom of the screen. Um, in this case, I modify the bicycle. And it, it can be done. It just needs to follow the same rules as other boats. So bicycles are three long. And what does that look like? It seems seems like a basic same shape as the, uh, the original um, boats that actually swam that we looked at. So if I examine this, let's take a look. In the front, there is an extra light frame and a 30 inch boat board. Um, now bear in mind here, it doesn't matter what you use for frames. The reason why I have used in all of these examples the wooden frames is that that is essentially the first that you can craft on your own. So if you're having trouble getting the materials that you need in terms of frames and so on and so forth, um, you can just make those wooden frames. So when you're using metal frames and stuff, then you need to start getting, getting into welding and you need a lot more materials and things to do it. So you can use any frame that you that you can think of that, that exists in the game and it works just fine. It, the only reason I used the, um, 
the wooden frames is for that simplicity uh, and it's great it's best for beginners um, beginner characters who, who don't have the you know welding rigs and all that stuff um, on this extra light frame I have a 30 inch boat board so this is an identical setup to the original boats that we looked at it's just uh, has an extra light frame that's the only difference so I'm gonna skip down to the bottom take a look at this here is another extra light frame that is a very light metal frame now there's another 30 inch boat board and this one also has a wire basket on it so I had wooden baskets on the ones that we've looked at so far this one has a wire basket so from the, like a wire like a bicycle basket of course one made out of metal now I'm gonna go up into the center here uh, you can see that the boat board has been damaged in the center exactly like I said before that was because when I was testing this vehicle out I did run it ashore uh, just to see the speed at which it could be damaged and you could see that that speed was 28 as I said before so uh, this is this is where that test came from and I tested it out on, on a few others and so it was similar damage the faster you go the more the damage is going to be but for some reason it was always in the middle could be just a coincidence I guess um, there's a bicycle horn on this because that came with the bike and there is a saddle because again that came with the bike that's the seat and in this case there are foot pedals so notice that the paddles which are the control and power source of the other boats we've looked at so far are here replaced by foot pedals just like on a bike it's the same I mean this like I said this is just a bike I modified and I didn't actually touch the center except for to add a boat board so now notice that this follows all of the rules that I've said so far it has a minimum of three boat boards there's one on each and it has a control source and a power source in this case they both the control source and power source are uh, occupied by this foot pedals instead of the paddles so those are the big differences now also notice that unlike a bike that you might find on the street in the game this doesn't have any wheels and that is because you cannot install a boat board where a wheel is you can't have both at the same time they occupy the same space on the vehicle so I took the wheels off on the front and the back and put put boat boards on set so there's a boat board here here and here and there are controls and power source here now if you take a look down the safe and top speed are actually substantially higher now uh, I think that this top speed is partially so high because of the foot pedals so your legs are stronger than your upper body and I can pedal with more power with my legs than I can with my arms so the top speed goes up the safe speed is also then kind of subsequently higher but this vehicle is also very light coming in at 56 pounds and that's because of these extra light frames so if you do want to cruise around real fast but still have a very kind of small pared down vehicle um, this would be a way to do it maybe find a bike um, or you, you can put this together completely on your own uh, but in this case I just use a, a found bike and uh, and boatified it <laughs> and in terms of boatifying it this this is what the top speed is um, so that's actually it, it cruises around like uh, at a pretty good clip um, it's, it's fairly impressive so that brings me to the next little bit this is a fire engine <laughs> or a fire truck I should say fire engine is actually a different vehicle in the game I'm gonna examine it just like I have for all of the others uh, and this is a typical uh, fire truck in the game. It, this, this is no different. I, I didn't I didn't modify this in any way except for to turn it into a boat. And the way I turned it into a boat is, if I go all the way to the back, you'll see uh, in the not not totally on the outside, just in one, you'll see there's a boat board here, 30 inch boat board, same as what I've been using all along. Uh, which is the only option for in terms of turning something into a boat and then just in a mirror image on the opposite side there's another boat board now remember you need three boat boards and there needs to be balanced from left to right and top to bottom so if I go up the middle right there put it uh, under this kind of center trunk uh, that exists just about between the front seats there's a boat board right there now in this case this vehicle was large enough that uh, I didn't have to take the wheels off so if you look uh, right here the wheels are still there there's a 24 inch wheel 
should be one on this side, yep. And there are wheels uh, back here. So the wheels are still on this vehicle. So what happens is, the reason I took the wheels off of the bike was because I needed that in order to get my three minimum boat boards. In this case, uh, there's plenty of space for boat boards, so I didn't have to bother taking the wheels off. Um, so as you can see now, this one has a little bit of a different um, kind of terminology here at the bottom. This says wheels slash boat. And in this case, the wheels are currently disabled because I have put a boat board on. As soon as you put your first boat board on, it disables the wheels. So you can't drive this on the, on the road anymore. Um, but once you have the proper balance and, and number of boat boards set up, it will say swims as this does. Now, as I mentioned, in all uh, boat setups in this game, not only do you need your, your boat boards set up to be balanced, uh, but you also need a power source and you need a set of controls. So far, the paddles and foot pedals we've looked at provide both of those. However, in a truck like this, which we've converted into a boat, it just has its standard setup. So it has the um, V8 engine, and it has a controls. If I go up to this seat, you will see controls right there. Okay, so that's just the wheel and, and all of that setup. Um, so in terms of building boats in this game, and you could build this from scratch. It doesn't have to be a fire engine. I just use this as an example because this a vehicle is 13,000 pounds, and this goes just fine on the water with three boat boards. So the weight is, is no object in this particular case, okay? Except for in terms of what the engine can do, how much power is required to move it along. But in terms of the boat boards, it doesn't matter with the weight. All that matters is the balance. Um, so the engine provides the power, the controls provide my ability to steer it, and, and that's what it is. So uh, if you are making this from scratch, all you have to do is follow those simple basic rules, and you can put anything on top. So come up with an idea, if you are if you are building something from scratch, come up, come up with an idea of how the frames should look roughly to you, and then you'll know roughly where the boat boards should go. And once you've installed those boat boards, then you have a boat. It doesn't matter what's on top. You can do anything, even a 13,000 pound truck like this. So, um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, once you get this to the other side, there, there is some difficulty in terms of, if you take a look, if you do plan on converting a boat into a, or I'm sorry, a car into a boat, notice here, you can't you can't actually start it on land because if you do start it on land, you once the wheels are disabled by the boat ports, you're not going to be able to get it into the water. So you have to drive it mostly into the water, like I have done here. You need at least um, I don't know if it's one wheel or one square of vehicle. I guess I would assume it's one wheel, possibly. I don't totally know the rules of this yet, but if you go too far over to here, this truck will sink. And in doing this test run, I lost probably five or six <laughs> fire trucks. So um, there's a lot of trucks under this uh, in the deep waters here. Um, so it can be difficult. You, you have to set it up just right. You have to be very careful that you don't lose your car. And I think I think the way it works is you want at least one wheel. Where is there a wheel? There's a wheel right here. Um, you want at least one wheel in shallow water, I believe is how it works. Not necessarily one square of the vehicle, because right here there is no wheel. So that is a guess. Do not take my word for it. You may lose a vehicle. You're going to have to kind of do some test runs on your own. But I think that's why it works, because take a look at this, this, uh, this bicycle. I believe I was able to get into the water with the wheels on, but I'm not, uh, again, I'm not totally sure. I may have dragged it in there. Okay. The other thing you want to make sure is when you have a very large vehicle like this, you are going to have to dive into the water in order to get into the truck. <laughs> so just be careful you don't drown. And just like anything else, I'm going to drive. Once I take control of this, I can move along just fine. Let's see. So what you would do is if, if you're if you're crossing a river, so here's my map, if I'm going across the river here, uh, once I get to the other side, wherever I want to be, I want to do the same thing. I want to get my wheels, some of my wheels up on land, uh, or at least into the shallow water, and 
I then need to remove my boat board. Just be aware that another thing that you have to keep in mind when I go back to the land here. Oops, I hit the wrong buttons and I let go of the controls. That is not good. Okay. Um, just be aware that uh, another factor in terms of the weight of the vehicle, I think you can see one of the trucks I, yeah, I think that's one of the trucks I uh, ended up dumping in the water. It's still there. Okay, let's see. Let's see how, f how far back I can go, actually. Yeah. Go. Keep hitting the wrong button. See, now I can get out without jumping into the water. No, hold on. So, um, so just be aware, uh, in, in large vehicles, uh, the possibility of needing to swim um, in order to get in. <clears throat> uh, the weight of the vehicle doesn't just affect its top speed uh, on the water. It also affects your ability to swap in and out boat boards. So if, I, if you take a look, when I examine this vehicle, if I go to remove, no, I'm going to go down to the boat board. Here I am on a boat board square, and I go to remove the boat board. You'll see that I need a tool that has a jacking ability of at least 13. Um, that sounds very suggestive, but of course this means like a car jack, vehicle jack. Um, and it has to have that minimum ability, which I think there's only one jack in the game that has that kind of power. Although there are cranes and stuff that maybe can do this, I don't know. I don't know all of the ins and outs of of that, but. Uh, or it could have a strength of 602. Um, so just be aware, the larger the vehicle, the more strength or uh, or tools that you'll need to actually make it work. If I go on to just this boat, which is 3x3, three three, and I go to remove a boat board, in this case I need a strength of 8, or a tool with a jacking quality of 1. These boats of 3. If I remove this, this only requires a strength of three. So keep your character's strength in mind and what tools you have available in terms of building the size of the boat, because uh, it will affect your ability to put boat boards on and take them off. And you don't want to, you want to end up building your boat so large by accident that you can't actually use it anymore. Uh, okay, let me look at my notes real quick. That is most of what I wanted to cover. Um, Okay, before I got to now one thing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually build a boat just to show you all the, the minimums of what you need to build the simplest of boats uh, in terms of the basic starter strategy. But one note I did want to make was I don't know if you can see it on here. Down here. Uh, I attempted to build a bridge uh, as an alternative means of using a boat because in general you can walk on them but if you're not controlling them what uh, see you can do it here I still need to work on that maybe if I do make an advanced boat building video maybe that will be covered because for some reason yeah, see I can walk out on this one just fine but when I try to do the same thing on my bridge that I made it uh, it just doesn't work. Uh, why don't I show it to you? You can fast forward if you're not uh, super into this part, but it's not very far away. It's down here. So I'm in my bicycle boat. As you can see, I can go quite a bit faster. Uh, I, can, I think the top speed on my... There, you can see this, the bridge down here on the mini-map. <laughs> so, yeah, here it is. So this doesn't work. I don't really know why. Just back up a little bit. Where is my... I gotta zoom out a little bit. Oh, wait, please. There we go. Okay. So if I... Oh, I slowed down, didn't I? If I come up here... Go to zero... Ran ashore just a little bit. Okay. If I go on here, for some reason, once I get to the deep water, it says, it asks me if I want to dive into the water. So I don't totally know 
why I can't walk on this one onto the deep water, but I can on my other boats. But I will play around with this and um, you know maybe make an addendum video once I figure it out or or whatever the deal is. So I don't know what, the, what quite the deal is here, but it'd be very cool to be able to make a bridge. As you can see, it's not super hard. You do just need a ton of materials. Um, I have almost stretched this all the way across. The distance here is three squares on the over map. So uh, if, it, if I make it possible to be able to walk across this, that would be phenomenal. Because what you can do, for one thing, is then, of course, monsters will be able to follow you across by walking. But you put doors in and stuff like that. You could, you could do all kinds of things with this. So that is a possible alternative use of boats. But uh, so far, I, oh, for some reason, I always hit that. <laughs> okay, let's go. Now let's go back. What I'm going to do now is I just will show you how to build a basic boat. If you have not done one yet yourself, it can come in very handy. I think that's this setup right there. So slow down to zero. Stop driving. Uh, it should not be moving. Out the controls. <laughs> I actually want to get it away from here now. Oh, I can't believe that worked. Okay. Stop driving. I'm obviously not a driving pro. Okay, that is my setup. <clears throat> so here's the basics that you will need. Um, not the ropes. I don't. I don't know why there are ropes there. Uh, but you will need uh, boat boards. Don't pay no attention to the numbers. I just wanted to make sure I had plenty here. You need three boat boards in order to build a boat. You need um, three wooden frames, and I believe you'll need more frames in order to build the boat boards to begin with. But we'll look at that in a second. And you need nails. That's it. Those three things. Oh, I know why there's short ropes here because I, I, I think I put sh short ropes here instead of oars. I'll get some oars down. Yeah down below in a minute. So, what you want to do in terms of starting construction is, first of all, you go to the construction menu. It's tempting to go to the crafting menu, which is here, which is Shift-7, but instead you go to Shift-8. This is the construction menu. In this case, I've been building uh, vehicles, so it defaults to that very f nicely, but uh, you may have to search for this. It may be, it's down near the bottom, and so you may not be able to see it. Now it's going to ask you where you want to construct this vehicle. So I'm, boats are considered vehicles in the game, so you do have to build it as a vehicle. Um, so that's why you select that. You don't select build a boat or anything. And when you start building this vehicle, it has to be on land. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the up arrow in order to start building it here. You can't build it where you are. You cannot build it in the water, and you can't build it where there are there's stuff in the way. So I couldn't build it here. That would be invalid. Here would be invalid. Here would be invalid. But any of these other squares would be fine. If that makes sense. So I'm just going to hit the up arrow, and I am just going to say this is the USS Rob Hale. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that up to the name of my book I plugged earlier. Books, I guess I should say. Stories. That's called supers. Link below. <laughs> um, so now what I have here is a frame installed as a vehicle. So you can see under the mouse view on the right, this says wooden frame, but it's in a bracket because that is the base of the vehicle. So now when I hit the E button, it asks me where I want to examine. I want to hit up exactly the same as I did before. Now all of the rest of my vehicle con construction is going to be done right in here. So one kind of pro tip then is because you need to start building this on the land, but you ultimately want it in the water, uh, well, I'll show you what to do in a second. What, what I'll do here is install. So uh, while well, building a wooden frame, let me just back up a second. I'm going a little too fast. Let's do a search here. Building a wooden frame 
That's what it's called in the crafting menu. So if you don't have any frames yet and you can't find any or whatever, this is something that you can build pretty early on. And what you need is five 2 by 4s and 20 nails. And you also need a tool of hammering of one or more. So you can do this with a rock. A rock is good enough to hammer. So you will need um, a more sophisticated hammer later on. We'll talk about that. But for this stage, you could just have a rock to build a frame. Uh, and the 2 by 4s and nails you can get from deconstructing any piece of furniture, any countertop, uh, doors, and anything that uh, is made out of wood essentially in the game will give you 2x4s and nails. At the very beginning of the game when your skills are very low, you probably have to smash those things rather than deconstructing them. You may not have the tools to deconstruct them or, or the ability or whatever. Um, if that's the case, what you'll need to do is smash them instead. And the way to do that is once you get your rock uh, which you can find anywhere outside. Um, you can wield your rock and then hit the smash key, which is S, appropriately enough, and smash the, the item. I'll, I'll kind of show you in a second. Uh, that's This is a very, very beginner's guide uh, at this point. Um, so that's that's what you need to get the 2x4s and the nails. So that's, pr that's pretty easy. Later on in the game, you can cut your own 2x4s from trees, and you can forge your own nails and you know, using your anvil and all this other crap. Um, but that's what you need to build uh, this frame. And that's how you start the vehicle construction in the construction menu. So if you have a rock in your hand and you hit the letter S, it'll say smash where, and you just smash the wooden thing with the rock in hand. Or anything else. I'm, I'm just saying a rock if you're a very, very, very beginner character. Um, and the rocks you can find outside. So if I like take a look over here, there's some rocks. See? grab one of those and wield it. Okay, moving along. Now what you want to do is construct your boat board. I have some right here, but constructing the boat boards you do in the crafting menu as well. I'm going to hit Shift F. That allows me to search, and I'm just going to search for board, and I get some options. The second one here is boat board, and once again, I need 2x4s and nails. You can get that from the same source that I mentioned earlier. But now notice I need uh, more sophisticated tools. In this case, I need a tool of hammering of two or more. And I need a tool of wood sawing of one or more in order to make the boat boards. Now, a tool of hammering of two or more is what a makeshift hammer can do, in which case you need two rocks and a heavy stick, I believe, and you would do that in the crafting menu as well. So a makeshift hammer is enough to put together a fully from start to finish a crude rope, uh, rope, crude boat. So that is, um, if, if your goal is to make a boat at the very beginning of the game, then that's what you want to do. You want to go for a uh, makeshift hammer. We'll get you there. Now the wood sawing tool, that can be a little bit more difficult. If you saw in my Let's Play of called Ely's Apocalypse uh, that I'm currently running as of the making of this video, the uh, wood sawing thing can be can be tough to find. I ended up finding a, a, a power saw, um, but what you would normally find would be like a wood saw, like kind of a hand version. Um, but they, they can be tough to find. So this is actually, I think, probably the difficult most difficult part of building a boat from scratch is finding this, but basically you want to either find a, a handsaw, whatever they're called, uh, in a hardware store, for example, or an actual powered saw. So, once you have all of that stuff put together, you can build your boat boards. Once you have a boat board nearby, just like I do, and I examine my creation, I want to hit I for install. You can see all of the commands right here at the top. I is for install. My cursor, see how I can move the cursor around the blue thing there? If I move it over my frame that I currently have and I hit install, my boat board and everything else I can build is lit up. So I just hit enter. I don't care about the dog. Still don't care about the dog. And now it's done. So it takes time. It will tell you when you install uh, right over here at the top. It will tell you how long it takes. So it does take time. Right now it's only 1 p.m. so we're good to go. Now what I want to do is I want to grab this by hitting Shift G. It says grab where. I'm going to go to the right, so I'm going to actually grab the boat. I'm going to push it now into the water. Okay. Actually, I'll move it back one. Okay. Now I'm going to let go by hitting Shift Grab again. So it says I release the supers. All right. So now I'm going to examine the vehicle again, and I'm going to make it 
uh, big enough to actually float. So remember it needs to be three boat boards and three frames. That is the minimum. They can be in any way, shape, or form. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to hit install frame. So notice, I'm just going to go back to the menu in a second. Notice I was on the original frame here and I moved up and built a frame there. Now I'm going to move back and install my frame. I don't care about the dog. Okay. Now I'm going to try to make this one like a on an interesting shape here. So I'll install a frame here. I have not, never made a boat of this shape, so we'll have to make sure that the boat boards work properly. Oh, of course I put most of it <laughs> on the land by accident. So I have this, uh, it's actually facing backwards right now. That's okay, we can deal with that. Okay, so as you can see, it's a T-shape. So this is one, two, three, four, five frames. Now we need to install the boat boards. These are 30 minutes piece. I still don't care about the dog. Um, so I have a boat board here. I'll put a boat board here. Oh, monster's coming. Uh, I don't know why this monster's headed this way. May have, may be in for a fight. Now it swims. So I've got the, the requisite three boat boards, and I have them in a shape that balances it from left to right because it is wider than some of my boats, right? It's three wide, only at the top, and it's three long, but it's not uh, a square shape, right? It's not three by three. So I have the boat boards here, here, and here, and as you can see at the bottom, it says it swims just fine. It still says it has a top speed of zero miles per hour, and that is because I do not currently have an oar. Uh, I am kind of glad this happened though because I do want to mention yep, oars. So what you do, they're called paddles when they're on the boat, they're called oars when they're off the boat. So that can be slightly confusing. So let me go back to the crafting menu and what we'll do here is we're going to find an oar and what I need to do to build oars, okay it's plural, oars. Uh, I need nails and 2x4s again, so again disable your furniture, just smash it or, or take it apart, uh, dismantle, not disable. And you need your, your hammer of two or more and your wood sign of one or more, which you need to build the boat boards. So that's essentially the minimum that you need. Uh, what is the skill that I need? The skill, this has a skill level of zero, but the boat boards, so a skill level of zero. Something, I, think, I guess it's installing. Back in here. Put this. Where should I have all the controls in the back? All the controls right here. I'm going to install paddles. Okay, so remember it's it's oars when you make them, and it's paddles when you put them on the boat. So if you look over here though, it'll say components required one oars. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, so it can be very confusing when you're very first starting out um, that it's called oars when you make them and it's called paddles when you install them. So just be aware. Um, and I think installing, I believe install. I'm gonna I'm gonna check on the skills uh, real quick after this. The skills that you need. Okay. So I now have a boat that moves. It has a Safe speed of 14 miles per hour, top speed of 49 miles per hour, it accelerates at 1 mile per hour, it weighs 110 pounds, it's a lot of wood, uh, and it does indeed swim. So, oops, I want to go back into that menu. When I install here, wooden frame requires a mechanics of 1. So if I install a boat board, that requires a mechanics of 2. So you do need a fabrication level of three, I think, I thought, to build a boat board. Maybe not though. It's a difficulty of three, but it has no required skills, I guess. So it might be a good idea to have a fabrication level up to three, which you can get by building all of these things, I'm working on practicing building them. And uh, you need a mechanic skill of two. So those are the skills. So if you're kind of saying, okay, what do I need? And you want to write a list. You need mechanics level of two, fabrication level of three. You need uh, nails. You need 
uh, wood two by fours, right? You need a saw, a wood saw, and you need a hammer of level two, which you can make on your own here in the crafting. Uh, it's called a makeshift. If if ever you're in doubt and you're trying to do stuff on your own, search for makeshift because <laughs> there's a lot of cool things in here, um, including this makeshift jack, which you, like I said, you might need a jack if it's heavy enough. Uh, makeshift. What was I got? I already forgot. Hammer. So it has a two hammer in quality. That's the minimum that you need. A regular hammer, like the type you buy at a uh, hardware store in real life, uh, those are in the game, they have a three hammering quality. So if you have one of those already, you're good to go. But just a stone only has a one, and you need a minimum of two. And um, this you can build right off. So you do need two rocks, though, because it requires a rock to make. Um, wait. I thought it required a rock to make. Hmm. Maybe it requires... That's strange. Last time I made one, I made one with a rock. Maybe this changed. I don't really know. But you may need a, a chunk of steel, a lump of steel. Again, by smashing stuff, you can get that pretty easily. You need a heavy stick or a 2 by 4 both easy to get. And um, the string, I guess, might be the toughest to get. But you can, um, you can take apart rags um, into strings and then and then put them together into small into uh, threads. I'm sorry, which I think a yeah, thread's 40. So you can you can take apart racks. It takes a very long time to do that, but it's easy to get the materials, relatively speaking. Um, I really thought you could do this with two rocks. Um, yes, not. Still though, not too bad. So that's all it takes to build a, a, a boat right off. I'm gonna push this a little further into. Oh, I thought I was gonna push it further into the water. Oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> so I'm hitting that shift G to grab it again, pushing it into the water. I'm going to go up right to here. This is where I put the controls. And I know because on the far right there, you'll see just above the minimap, it says press that shift 6, that up carrot thing to drive. And once I do it, once I say yes, I'll get my radical. I hit up. This is the same as a car, but if you've never done it before, um, you hit up and down. Take a look up here next to the miles per hour and watch this go up and down as I hit up and down. 14 recalls my safe speed. It does stop me there. Um, this is my actual speed, so all I have to do is let time pass by hitting 5 on the number pad. That's what I do anyway. There are other options, but. And it slowly speeds up at 1 mile per hour each turn. Here I go. And I can steer by turning left and right. It's a little wonky looking when I when you turn around, but yeah, I can install some baskets on this relatively easily, and I have something that I can ferry things across the river with. So that is it. I'm pretty sure that is the end of the tutorial. But let me take a quick look. Bear with me for just a second. I'm going to take a quick look at my notes, uh, and I know it's going on kind of long, but uh, there's a lot to making the boats and, and getting it right. I had a lot of specific questions as I was going through it that I needed answers, and, and I thought you guys might benefit from it too. Um, so the basic starter strategy I just covered. Uh, there, any other like ve vehicular building option is possible, like I mentioned before, as long as you have the boat boards in the right arrangement, that's no problem. Um, an alternative to doing this, if you happen to find early on a I mean this is well, it's still a little more advanced basically the next the next level uh, based on or as opposed to what I just showed you which is building a boat by hand is finding a car or a bicycle or something like that and applying the boat boards to it so I showed you that setup earlier but you can do that with anything you do need a jack and you do need a, a, a vehicle that can run um, so like a bicycle that's fairly um, it can be hard to find bicycles but they will generally run as long as they have wheels um, but you don't really need wheels right because you're going to put a boat board on it anyway but uh, you do need to start kind of taking things off sometimes and that can get into the welding skill and that can take a while to develop so um, but that is kind of like the next level that's the intermediate is modifying a vehicle in order to go on the water that isn't 
didn't start out to be a boat. Another alternative, as I mentioned, is the hand pump with the inflatable raft, but that hand pump can be difficult to find. And then late late in the game, once you've accumulated all of the right tools and all of the right skills, you can build it any way that you want. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. So, if I forgot anything, uh, I'll put it down in the comment below, but I think I have covered everything I wanted to. We're on about an hour, a little over an hour. So, um, I think that's it for me. So, I hope you did learn something valuable from this, uh, building boats in the game. Oh, the other thing, I guess, <laughs> I can't believe I, I left without uh, almost mentioning this, but um, it is standard that boats come with the game, but you do have to select it to make sure it's active in your world. Um, so there is an option when you are building your world at the start that you have to add boats to it. So um, boats won't necessarily be, be in the, I guess, it, it is still sort of vanilla, but you do basically have to turn them on. So keep that in mind. Um, and once you turned it on, boats can be really like a a fulfilling way especially I mean some worlds don't really have a lot of rivers nearby where you might be living but like this world for example is a huge river and um, it would be cool to you know ferry across and maybe have a house here or something like that and ferry across or whatever I mean you know wherever your heart's desired but but boats can be really cool awesome addition to the game so I highly recommend them and I hope you found this useful if you did please do like the video please do subscribe and check out my uh, let's plays as well if you like let's plays uh, it would be greatly appreciated so thanks for joining and Rob Hale over and out